Freunde, Rick Aduno und Nille Vaya. Wir spielen morgen bereits aufgrund des Feiertages in Bayern gegen Ingolstadt. In Ingolstadt am Sonntag sind die Straubinger zu Gast. Dort spielen wir erst um 19 Uhr. Bisher sind äh, 2290 Karten abgesetzt. Rick, how was the training? What about the injured players? Yeah, uh, training were good this weekend. Uh, uh, schnelle Eistraining mit uh, uh, all the systematic stuff we needed to work on. Uh, mit Nick St. Pierre is uh, Verletz für zwei Wochen. Uh, das ist uh, vier Spiel, nicht spielen. Und uh, Pieta, wir spielen gegen Ingolstadt, alles klar mit Pieta. Puchlitsche laufen, last zwei Tage. Uh, starker Training. Um, und Kretschmann, Christian Kretschmann ist uh, gut. Uh, aber wir hatten vier Reihen, Spiel gut, das letzte zwei Spiel. Und uh, Christian uh, spielen für Pieta, das letzte zwei Training, aber heute uh, Christian uh, spielt als uh, Verteidiger. Uh, sieben Verteidiger Training am Morgen. Und uh, Kretschmann uh, war ein guter Verteidiger. Uh, last year gegen Denmark in uh, the Champions League. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, everything we worked on, uh, I still think uh, the Einstellung is sehr gut. Alle Spieler froh. Aber we really explained to them, and I don't want them to be nervous but we know the situation that we're in. We know the situation we're in. I told them not to be scoreboard watching, try not to look at the standings, uh, just play one game at a time, and let's try and win one game at a time. So that you're not thinking about five different teams that are possibly fighting for that last spot. And that's important. But we still, practice has been great. But we still need to be. We still need to be quicker. We need to move the puck quicker. Uh, it's been a pretty good start for us with the four games we've played. But to be a number one team in the DEL, everything has to be quicker, harder, stronger. Score more goals. Defensive. We've been very good for four games, and that's that is Uberashang for Ish because. Uh, normally when you come in and take a team over the defensive play needs to be restructured and worked on but and we did restructure some things there's no question we restructured we changed the whole defensive scheme and so so far it's worked and I hope it can still work not saying there was anything wrong with the old scheme teams play that way it's just the way I feel that Krefeld needed to play And uh, that's the way I coach. But what, what's the difference of the structure? I think they played more of a man-on-man -man before, mm -hmm. and we're playing more of a zone defense. Mm -hmm. Our zone defense does turn into man-on-man -man in certain situations, but not all the time. And so you have to know those situations when it does turn into man on man, but it's zone defense most of the time, so that if you don't, if you get, if you get man on man, you have to be a pretty strong team, because if you get beat once, you're in trouble, because that guy's walking in all along. But again, there's nothing wrong with that system. It's an identifiable system and, and a good system too, but it's, it's hard to play. So, so you think you have more players to uh, play uh, zone? zone? Uh, yeah. yeah, I just, it might be, sometimes it gets more complicated, Because if you lose a guy, you got to make a switch. But normally the switches are only down low in the corners, or you know, down low uh, sometimes off face-offs. We don't have switches off of face-offs. But sometimes in zone defense, you might end up with a forward in front of the net. But we specify we always want a D-man in front of the net, so they're always conscious of that. But it gives the two defensemen and the low forward an opportunity to sort things out and attack at good angles 
and read people a little bit better, where you don't have to be tight to a guy a lot of times. On the initial D zone coverage, yeah, you got to be tight, stick on puck, angle, hit and pin. The second guy's got to read, he can steal the puck and go. But if you're playing man on man and you, the second guy has the second forward down low, then you're not available to grab the puck to help the first guy out. So it's just some different situations with it. And uh, I mean, different teams play a lot of things, you know. Uh, Oklahoma City and Edmonton, they tried to play a swarm, which is like five guys down deep trying to get puck possession, but you're giving up your points all the time. And they, they took six months to get used to that with Edmonton. Actually, probably two years. But uh, so still, there's lots of, lots of things you can use, but I want to keep it simple, I want to keep it hard working, and I want to keep it identifiable, and I want to keep it the way I think the team can be most successful. And they all, they're all on the same page, they're all working very hard, they've all had some rough times, it's a very, I mean, it's a very tough time like I said before, to come in, and I accept that role, I have no problem with a tough time to come in when you're sitting in last place and you've got to fight your way up to make a playoff spot and try and get the whole group on the same page. Uh, so we're certainly going to give every, every bit we have. And the pressure's on us at home to get back to normal, to get that winning attitude at home again like we used to have all the time. And that will come. That will come. It's just this group of players that we have are a good group, they're just used to, they just don't know how to get over that hump to win at home and just feel like when you step on this rink in Krefeld, nobody beats us. And that was the first thing that I implied to our team when I came here in 2009. Nobody beats us at home, and I don't care how we do it, we find a way. And you might have a bad game and you might win it, and that's how you win at home. And most nights you need to be dominant and it's a hard thing to do, but you need to be physical. And I believe, you know, physical players that can play physical without taking penalties can really help you in that regard. If you're skating around in your own rink and you're not playing any bodies to turn pucks over, the other team is never going to be afraid to beat you in your home rink, ever, ever. So that's, we're trying to establish that. Do we have the right people in place here to do that? I don't know. I'm going to continue to find out. But right now we're doing everything else really, really well. So sometimes, I mean, if you look at Munich and those other teams, they're not overly physical, but they're so skilled and they're so fast. And the puck moves so quick. And that's what we're working on in practice all the time. I'm constantly harping in practice. Puck's got to move quick. Puck's got to move quick. Feet got to move quick. You have to explode with your skating. That's what we have to keep implying. But you, you play as a much so fast than most of Munich. Well, we have to we have to say, <laughs> we have to say they're deceivingly fast. That's what we have to say. They're deceivingly fast. But do we have a Wayne Gretzky? I don't know. That's what I used to call Bobby Wren when he was in his heyday when I had him in Ezerlong. But if you're not real fast, but you've got sehr good Kopf and hands, then you don't have to be overly fast. You just have to have great timing and smart positional play so that's but tempo of the game if you look back on all the years in the DEL who wins the championship two years ago Munich wasn't so fast Munich's defense wasn't so good Munich's goaltending wasn't so good they lost out in the first round of the playoffs they restructured everything higher salaries better players they became what they need to be like ice bear in Berlin all those years uh, six years in a row quick Puck move, didn't have to be overly physical, just all good players that were on the same page. Uh, and there are some teams in this league like that right now. Ingolstadt, I believe, is one of those teams right now that is very good. And uh, we have to be ready for it. Did you see uh, the game last night on Ingolstadt? No. You know what? I didn't. I've got them downloaded on the computer. I'm going to look at them today. and. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I've had so much going on that uh, with a lot of little different aspects going on. Uh, and then moving out of this rink over to the other rink and having no internet and um, just trying to keep in touch with things. Uh, it wasn't a priority that I needed to look at Ingolstadt's game last night. It's all I can look at it today and really analyze it. But I, again, myself, 
if I know teams are playing. I'm just trying to focus on the Krefeld Penguins and what we do, and then I'll pick apart the other team what they do and show it on video, and we'll hopefully generate success from that. Once things get a little more settled, I can, I can spend more time uh, watching the games on telecom and stuff like that. But first you have to get food in your apartment, you have to get cable, you have to get phone, you have to get all that stuff. So, And then we got kicked out of here, so we didn't have any of that. So, But I, you know what? I'm, I'm surprised how well things have gone since I've come and how quickly we had to get things going uh, just to not even think about anything and go. So I feel really good about everything we've accomplished. I didn't even know who Philly was. I had no idea. We met my first day here. And so far, everything has ran very smooth. Uh, did you uh, see some games from English? Against uh, England? No. The usually, England? no. Uh, usually at the home games, when they were going on, I was at the same time with the DNL okay. in training. Mm -hmm. So I uh, saw so maybe the last 10, last five minutes, and mm -hmm. I don't think that's enough time to analyze any of the games. I think I know, I, I think I know Engelstadt well enough, Shoppy, with Greilinger, with Buck, yeah. with Tadichuk, with their defense, with the, their goaltender. I know them very, very well, you know, I just have to pick apart some of the small things they do on video, so we're well aware of that. And, uh, you know, they, they do move the puck good, they got great one-timers, their power plays work good low, they work good high. Uh, we need to catch them off guard, just outworking them. Uh, they came very hard the uh, uh, first period against Nuremberg. Yeah, so I mean, you know, that's the thing, Nuremberg's a good team too. And they're going to come hard against us, nobody's going to go easy on us. Here, here's the scenario, everybody thinks Krefeld's a pushover. And that's what I don't like. And I've told our team, we have to create that identity all over again now. That identity has to be recreated. And again, it's up to your leadership. It's my responsibility, it's leadership responsibility, it's player responsibility to create identity. That you come to the rink every day, you know the Krefeld Penguins are hard to beat. You know they're hard to beat on the road and they're hard to beat in their own building. And that's what we have to do. It doesn't have to be talked about. It has to be established in practice and in the game, so people know. And I remember it took, when I first came in 2009, we were lucky. We, we got it going right away. People respected us because of our work ethic and we carried it on. And we just carried it on and that was when I recruited players to play here. I would always tell them, you're not coming here for a party, you're coming here to earn your money. And if you're not getting it done at training camp, you won't be here. And that's how we always recruited players. And told them that if they, again, that's a hard thing with Krefeld because again, our budget, and I would always tell them, if we can't pay you the money that you feel you, you earn once you prove yourself, then we, we we're happy to let you go if that's the way it is, unless we increase our budget. So that was always a, it was always a, a little carrot we'd give the players we recruit, come here, we'll make you better, you do well, you can move on. But I put my foot in my mouth way too many times because we lose folks, you lose Clark, you lose those guys. But you know what? Those are the guys that say, hey, to other people, you want your chance in the DEL? Go play for Krefeld. You'll get your chance. And you prove yourself. And we've established ourselves like that. We've got to continue to do it. Rick, can you please say some words about Straubing or next home? You know, Straubing's a different team too. They, they, you know, again, I'll have to look at their video and I'll start doing it, but Larry Mitchell plays kind of a, they play a real good offensive push game when they get the puck. But then when they're defensive, they would play a 1-3-1 defensively last year when I played them, which is tough to break in the neutral zone, so we'll have to come up with a way to beat that. But they play pretty structured defensively and they're very good offensively. They've got some good players offensively. And the thing about Straubing is Climey, the goaltender, and I believe Patsold has played well for them too this year. So they've got two good goaltenders, but when Climey gets hot, he's really tough to beat. And I know he carried them to the playoffs last year. And even when I spoke with Larry Mitchell and Jason Dunham when we were scouting in the summertime, or in uh, April last year, they told me how without Climey they would have never made the playoffs. He just got hot and he played unbelievable. And that's what we need. I mean, it's not putting pressure on our goalies, 
that's what we need. But if we do our job and keep our shots under 25, it doesn't put a lot of pressure on our goalies. Coming to the shots under 25, I mean, especially against Cologne, it was, I think they had some mid-30s shots. Uh, so statistically, it was not successful, but those shots were almost entirely perimeter shots, so right. no quality shots. Was that on purpose, or were you unsatisfied with the, the count of shots? With our shots for or their shots against us? Their shots against you. Right, and we look at them between periods, and we were pleased, Billy and I, because the shots were from the perimeter. And when we're keeping shots to the outside, per our back pressure, then it's a good thing. You just have to be aware of middle slots of deflections. And so when they're coming from the outside, and sometimes, sometimes we've played teams and they've had, you look, it looks like a box sometimes with a ton of shots, especially if you killed a lot of penalties, but they're all from the outside. So that's a good thing. And if you get 35 shots against, but they're from the outside, then you're still doing a good job as a team. It's when you're getting rebounds after rebound in front of your own net, then you gotta, you really gotta bear down. So statistically, the last four games, it's been really good, uh, the way that we've defended and the way that we've kept our shot count down. Again, it gives the goalies, they believe in their players. When goalies believe in their players, it's easier to play. When goalies are nervous about their defensemen and their players, it's tough to play. The other team's getting scoring opportunities and, and then everything starts to break down. One of the scoring opportunities that you've just mentioned is certainly that uh, the one that uh, there is a, a lucky bounce or there's a rebound from the goalie that he can't do otherwise. And um, one gets the impression that uh, also the big teams like Mannheim and Munich, they have no problem if there is such a situation, they take the puck and just hit it out of the, of the zone and if it is an icing, okay, it's, a, it's an icing. Uh, with Krefeld in the past, you always had the idea they want to secure the puck, they want to look, and they want to start a counter-attack immediately, which results in their losing the puck very often in their own zone, and then you get you get you get goals. Are you instilling more of a of a, uh, a feeling yeah. of liberty in them that they are free to get the puck out by any means? Just get it out and safely out. Well, that and, and yes, we have. We've worked on that, and that's helped us the last four games. We've worked on it. I want the guys to play a puck possession game, as everybody says. There are times, specific areas, the puck has to go deep, the puck in your own defensive zone, and then, and then this is something that we've worked on, our deep neutral zone counters. We're going to continue to work on that, where the puck has to go. That's the top edges of our circles or the top edges of our dots. We want that puck going up right away. We want the puck going up quick. Uh, we've got certain movements uh, out of the neutral zone on the counters. We want the puck up quick either deflected, one touch passes, puck moving quick. Again, it's all the ability of each individual that you have, but we're still trying to make them all better. In the deep in the defensive zone, yeah, you want to rotate the puck as quick as you can, side to side in your own defensive zone to eliminate the forecheck. And you have to have three people deep. And we've worked on that with our certain structure as to how to come out of the defensive zone to elude pressure. And it has worked against Cologne and it's worked against Munich, but where we've been a little bit, and again, the word unlucky, okay, you, you, you know, um, you can only be unlucky so much. Uh, we need to be the lucky way where the goalie's making, we don't want it to happen, but we need the goalie to make two or three saves sometimes where we've coughed up the puck. That's what happens with the other teams. Like Munich, they win games because of Ostend Birken, and they win games because of uh, the other goalie that played in the American League. They've got two great goalies. Teams that have two great goalies, they, uh, and I believe we have that in Krefeld. We've just got to show it. We can't just keep saying, oh, our goaltenders are good, but we're not winning hockey games. They, they, you've got to win. Each Goaltenders have to win. They've got to steal seven or eight games every year. That's just the way it is in, in any league, in any league. Like I said in my first press conference, coach Montreal Canadiens would have been fired 25 times last year. They lost 23 in a row, but they believed in the coach, but Carey Price wasn't playing. So they said, holy geez, we've got no goaltending. We can't win. It's wrong. But they hung on to it, and now, like I said, they added Radulov, they added Carey Price, they added Weber, a good defenseman. Montreal Canadiens one of the best teams again. So it wasn't the coach to blame. It was they were just a little bit weak in areas, you know? So, uh, but with Krefeld, we have to try and get it done with what we have. With what we have and, and restructure it to having 
quality people at the salaries they play for and battle. And, then, and one thing that really impressed me in practice, the other day I told guys stay out and shoot. You know, we had a hard practice and I told them stay out, Billy take the D, I'll take the forwards. We did a lot of, we did a lot of good stuff with the young forwards yesterday, uh, passing pucks, shooting pucks. I want them to be better at it. And they, uh, right now, knock on wood, I hope it continues. I'm impressed right now with Orndorff, Mishkovsky, and uh, Ness and Kretsch is back in the lineup. So I like that scenario that we have there, that I'm, they're accountable right now. And then I look at the other end and every defenseman, and they had a lot of ice time, stayed out until the Zamboni came on the ice, shooting pucks and working. And that tells me something about character and wanting to win. They did not leave the ice. And when I walked off, I said to Hambly, I said, you know what, this is good stuff. And he goes, Rick, that's the only stuff. And that's what you want to hear from your players. They're here to earn their money and earn their keep. And that's what the other 20 guys have to do. That's what makes a winning team. I think we must come to an end because the bus is waiting for you. Yeah, I did tell the players we were supposed to leave at 12.15, but I said, trust me, it'll be tw more like 12.45 by the time we get all organized and everything. And that's not a problem because we need to make time for everything. So. All is good. Thank you. See you on Sunday. Goodbye. Okay.